Hi there, welcome to another Praise in the Morning. Again, it's another evening psalm today. And today we're going to be looking at Psalm 27. And it's a really interesting psalm. It splits out into different sections. And then I'm going to take it in those different sections as we read through the psalm from the NIV version. It has a step structure. And it's very much about seeking the Lord and wanting to know the presence of the Lord. So that's something to sort of keep your heart and mind focused on as we read this psalm today. I'm going to read the first three verses and read from the NIV version. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh, when my enemies and foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. This first part of the psalm leads us to confidence in God. A hope in God, as it, as it says there, even though the enemies are, as it were, against and right there against us. We sh who should we fear when our hope and trust and confidence is in God? Because it starts out, the Lord is my light and my salvation. What is it that we should fear if God is the light? This psalm is linked in many ways back to the themes of the book of Psalms and, and the first book of the Psalms and Psalm 1 of the way of God and considering the path that we would walk. And as we consider the path that we walk, when the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? There is no one to fear. So this first part is about confidence in God. And it's a strong confidence from David here. Even though there is increasing threat against his life, confidence is overall. The next part of the psalm, verses 4 to 6, deal with the seeking of God. And it, this, this part of the seeking is focused on God. Okay, And we're just going to read those verses, 4 to 6. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. So I read there from verse 3. And we'll carry on. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. Now into verse 4. One thing I ask of the Lord is that I sit that I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple for in the day of trouble he will keep me safe in his dwelling he will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and he will set me high upon a rock then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me at his tabernacle, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. What wonderful words of David seeking and focus seeking about of God, looking particularly, considering God's house, God's temple, God's, as it were, the tent that David set up like Moses in the wilderness, the shelter and the dwelling place of God, that there is a feast to be in this tabernacle of, and the God being the rock, the wilderness fortress and provision of God's people. This fits so well with the themes that we've been looking at over the last number of Psalms, that the seeking of the dwelling place of God, the questioning of how do I enter, how do I dwell upon the mountain or in the the holy place and the movement to the dedication of the temple that's coming in these next few psalms so consider this in our thinking in our seeking of god that this psalm doesn't start off with our cries as it were but it it, it looks at confidence it looks at statements of what is it that i have to be confident in god about and then starts to speak about, as it were, some of the great things that we can consider about the, the dwelling of God and God's presence with his people. 
that I may dwell in the house of the Lord forever, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord. These are wonderful things to stop and contemplate in your seeking of God. I'm going to move into the next section that, that, that follows on from uh, verses 4 to 6. Again, with seeking God, okay, but here more out of the, the stresses of the circumstances that surround him. And that's from verses 7 to 12. Hear my voice when I call, O Lord, be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face, your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, O God, my saviour. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me in the straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desire of my foes or for false witnesses rise up against me, breathing out violence. The seeking of God now turns in the stresses of the circumstances of enemies against David, false accusations and situations against him. And he turns to God. But these words don't come out of a, a trite statement of just, Lord, do this for me, Lord, do that for me. Hear the heart. This is at the very center of his seeking. It's an integrity of heart. He says, my heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, O Lord, I will seek. That's right at the center of this psalm. That's right at the heart of the integrity of his seeking of God. It does not start out with, as it were, petitions or name it, unclaim it of things that he needs. It starts out with a confidence in God. It starts out with a seeking of the greatness of his, his dwelling place. And at the heart of it, a realisation that the heart desires to seek after God. It's wonderful. This is the heart of this psalm, seeking God from a place of integrity, from a heart that cries out, seek his face. Is that what your heart cries? Like in Romans where it says, the heart cries, spirit cries, Abba, Father. This psalm ends again in confidence in verse 13 and 14. And this is where the step pattern comes to its conclusion, bringing us back to a place of faith. Verse 13, I am still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. At the end of it all, at the end of your confidence, you may have started with great confidence in prayer. You may have reached the heights of crying out and, and as it were, declaring focused prayer upon God. And then turn your heart to your needs and the stresses that turn you to prayer. But end with confidence in God. End that knowing that no matter what, there is the goodness of the Lord. He says, I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Even though his enemies are against him. He says, wait for the Lord. Have patience in the Lord. Have confidence in the Lord. Be strong and take heart. And wait for the Lord, because the Lord is good. Because we are asking questions, asking cries to the Lord of, Lord, teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me in the straight path. We're asking things of God to lead us, and we have to wait for him to lead us in those ways, and to show us the way of blessing, and to lead us into a deeper understanding of his dwelling place and his temple. The dwelling, as it were, even even though it be temporary, as it were, in this life, a dwelling place to know God, to know his confidence. So if your heart has cried out, Lord, yes, I seek your face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Then, then do that. Turn your heart to him. Amen.